Hey guys, welcome back to another video on Flatsum Web Design. Today's video is gonna be slightly different to the last one in terms of format. Um, I've already designed the page as you can see, so I'm gonna take you through it on the front end first so you can see what it looks like in its entirety. Then I'm gonna take you through the UX builder and I'm gonna walk you through all the different elements that I've used to make this up. Um, I'm gonna go a little bit slower than last time, so hopefully you guys can kind of keep up. Um, and then if you wanna go and build this yourself, you kind of know exactly how it's done. So let's jump straight into the video. So here's the page then, um, and as you can see straight away, I've got this really big hero image with this. I'm doing this for a specialized enduro bike. Again, disclaimer, nothing wrong with their original page. It's just a technical exercise for me and also to show you guys how you can go around designing and building pages yourself. The header element at the top, again, I've just put a logo in there so it looks legit, but the kind of layout itself is just the default flatsome layout. Nothing special there. You could have a play with it if you wanted to. I really can't be bothered. That's not the point of this video. Um, so let's have a quick look through the page then. We've got this nice big hero banner at the top. Um, and as you can see, it's a really, really clean page. Lots of white space. Um, and I really like this design. I think it looks really cool. A bit of a parallax effect on that banner there, which looks quite cool. With a little overlay on this image to the left-hand side, just pushing that above and interrupting that banner image. I, I like that. I think that looks good. Now on the specification thing, I like having this kind of bike chopped off on the right hand side. I think that looks cool. It kind of draws the eye a little bit rather than just having the bike just there. It's a bit more interesting than that. And then finally, we've got this picture of the frame followed by uh, the geometry. So that's it. It's a fairly simple page, but it's very clean. And I think it's a, uh, it'd be a great example um, to take you guys through how this was made. So moving over to the UX builder side of things, as you can see here, this banner image has nothing in it. So I actually made this image in Photoshop. Um, now, there's a reason for that. I initially built it just with the UX Builder. So I added uh, a text element with you know the all new Enduro um, and then put an image element inside the banner as well and created it that way. The problem with it was, as the screen sizes would change, it would completely throw this Enduro text and this image all over the place. So like now, as you can see, it, it's kind of hidden by the seat post and then the handlebars and that's about it. But as the screen kind of got smaller and bigger, what would happen is the text would drop down and get hidden by the frame and then it would drop all the way up and it wouldn't be hidden by it at all. And it was no good. I like it being behind the, the bike. I think it makes the bike kind of pop out a little bit more, um, especially with this the use of this typeface here, which is a bit of a, it's, if you actually look closely, it isn't the same as the specialized font. Um, I had a quick Google and it's the closest thing I could kind of get to it. It's close enough. Um, so what I actually did was I opened it up in Photoshop. So I took this image here put it in Photoshop and I just masked around this. If you look closely, it's not the greatest Photoshop job ever, but it will do the job. And then I just put this text behind it in again in Photoshop. I'm not gonna go through how to do that in today's video, but I'm gonna leave some links below um, to a few different guides for Photoshop. And also I'm gonna try and find some guides for GIMP and maybe some other alternatives as well that, that are free because I understand that not everyone has Photoshop. Um, so yeah, that's how I did this, is actually just one simple image and I've set it to 68%. So what happens is you can see as I, as I scale this in and out, that Enduro text and everything stays exactly the same. It's really similar all the way down to mobile as it is absolutely massive. Um, especially this big, I think it looks amazing. You might notice as well, depends how it comes across on the recording, but this text here is still pin sharp. And the reason is I exported this from Photoshop as an SVG file. Um, for those of you that don't know, that's a scalable vector graphic. And all it means is that this text isn't actually a, like a printed image, like this actual photo of the bike is. It, this is pixel perfect. So it looks really sharp across all screen sizes. And I think that's a really, really important touch when you're working with text that isn't an element on a banner. Because normally I, I put text in with the UX builder for that reason, that it looks really sharp and crisp. Sometimes you can lose that with images, but that's how you, how you, you get around that. Do it with an SVG. You will have to install a quick plugin to get the SVGs working, but if you just head over to the plugins page um, and then add new, I'm sure you guys know how to do this already. Type in SVG, and then I just use this this, this first result that comes up here, SVG support. Uh, without that plugin, you'll notice when you try and upload an SVG, it just says unsupported file type or something like that, and you can't do it. Anyway, moving on further down to this red section. Now this banner here is actually like, the bit I'm least happy with in this entire page. I wanted a bit of color here and I wanted something. Originally, I just did it with this white space um, and I think it looked a bit empty. If I just hide this very briefly, you'll see it just was missing something. Um, so I put this in, but I'm not overly happy with it. I think another way to do this is to put, you know, a, um, 
put a row here with three columns and maybe a three different icons perhaps or i mean the other thing is i mean you could always just even delete that and just treat this this banner as as a border and just have a border element like that i mean that works i think that looks good it introduces the color but doesn't interfere with this might just leave it like that um so that's again very simple so with both of these top two banners um they are the full width of the page you see no matter how big i make that they this red banner here and this top banner always full width now the, the way you do that is on this little settings cog up here change page from default template to page full width you'll notice there's loads of different templates in here have a play with them because they are really really good um so if you put a banner inside here not inside a, um, a row or inside a column or anything by default it just goes full width so that's how i build quite a lot of the time i don't put anything in a row or a column unless it absolutely needs to go in there um yeah, it's good and bad. I mean, it has its its pros, having staying organized, having everything in rows and columns and things. But this is organized enough for me. Just having a few labels down there, I can I know where everything is then. So moving further down the page, we have our first kind of proper bit of text, and again another image on the right hand side. Plenty of white space. Um, now this is fairly straightforward. If we just dive into this here, you'll see it's a row. I've got a row with two columns that are both six wide. If I just go into here, you can see the width adjustment here. Uh, if you didn't know that, so I made that 12, it goes the whole thing. Six just goes halfway. So I've just got two of those inside this one row. They're fairly standard inside of this one. I just have an image and I've just pasted that image in there. And in this one, it's just the text element and then a button element. It's important with this text here that it's, it isn't standard. Um, as you can see, if I open this up, there is some inline CSS, which all that means is there's just some CSS inside of those tags. So what I'm gonna do is if I jump over to my text editor and I can show it to you here with, with colors in, uh, involved. It makes it much easier to see. So as you can see, all it is, normally you'd start this H3 would go like this. So you have open open tag, then you have the actual H3 and then a close tag. Oh, excuse me. And then to close it, you just do that. And then in between there, this is the headline three. Now, all we're doing with inline CSS, if I drop that to a new line, just so you can see what's going on, is bef just bef after the three, before that kind of tag ends, I'm just putting style equals, and then two speech marks. Now inside of there, that's where we can go color, and then we can put in whatever hex code we fancy putting in. So that's black, for example, semicolon. Now after the semicolon, we can then do even more in there. So for example, margin, oops, margin, yeah, margin left, why not? And then do 30 pixels, colon. And then we can keep going. So as you can see, if I just get rid of this again, as you can see, all I've done up here is in style, I've got a color, which is the red color. We also have font size at 160%, just because I wanted a bit more control. I wanted that to be kind of obviously much smaller than the black H2 beneath it. Now the standard sizes for the H2s and the H3s, obviously the H2 is bigger by default, but I wanted both of them to be much, much bigger. They both come across quite small without any, any extra styling on there. Um, and then moving further down again, you can see I've done a very, very similar thing here with the H2. Um, I've just done the size. You can see 390%, so way, way bigger. Haven't bothered with the color because it just then goes to the default, which in this case is black. And that is set in the flatsome theme options. Um, lastly, you can see then the paragraph, there's absolutely nothing special with the paragraph. That's just a standard paragraph, no sizes or anything like that. The only other thing to mention here, in case you're wondering, is this class equals uppercase and then this like class equals thin font. All that is, is if I go into the text editor and then highlight this, you can see if I go on format, you can see thin font is already checked. So this is just uh, a part of the flat, flatsome theme, one of the options that's in there. Um, and all it does essentially is just changing the, the weighting of the text, which again, we could do with the inline CSS, but actually I think as I added this element in, it gave it to me thin. Uh, already so I didn't need to bother so I just kept it as is same with the uppercase when you add in like an, uh, a headline element default uppercase um, so if you ever wanted to get rid of that and you're struggling because everything you type in is uppercase literally just just get rid of that and that's it there you go there's a very brief a brief lesson on inline CSS so that's how I made these two sections here while we're in this area I want to add in some scroll to elements so this learn more button for example as you can see at the moment is linking to absolutely nothing from reality, what we probably wanted to do is to come down to this next section um, with sizing. So the way we're gonna do that is if I just hop into this row where we've created this and go add to column. Now, if I search for a scroll to element, here we go. So 
By default, it just says change this. And all that is the title. It's a backend title. No one sees that except if you have this bullet set to on. So if the bullet is set to on, you can see over here on the right hand side, there's a little red bullet. Now that displays on the front end as well. And all it means that sticks there the entire time. If I just show you, say hit save and then refresh this page over here, you can see it's always there. So if I click that, it then drops down to where I implemented that scroll element, which you can see is right about there. But we don't want that. What we're going to do is turn that off, delete that title there, and we're going to put in sizing. Now, the link here, you see, it does sort of start to sit here. You just leave it empty and that basically the link then becomes sizing. So that is exactly the same as that. Then all we're going to do is we're going to put it to the top of this element. And all it does basically is when you then scroll to this link of sizing, this scroll to element will be at the top of the page. So what we've got to do is go back up here to our learn more button, scroll all the way down to the link, hash, sizing apply update now if i come back over to my page over here refresh you can see that bullet on the right hand side is now gone and if i scroll all the way down to here hit learn more it scrolls and keeps me going here now this is where you need a bit of kind of practice with the scroll to element because in reality we probably want that slightly higher we want it about here so again i'm just going to click you can click and drag actually in the ux builder like this and put it to the top of that image over there or you can actually you know, it was over here. So you can just click and drag within these different columns to, to shift it about. Um, now, if we go back up and hit refresh again and hit learn more, now you can see we're slightly further up the page. So you could go, if you really wanted to, you could, you know, put it inside this banner, for example, um, if you wanted to, you know, scroll down to, to kind of like here, for say, you can absolutely do that. It's just a bit of trial and error with those scroll to elements. Anyway, moving on further down to this next section, we've just got a full width banner here. Nothing special about this. It's just set to full width, the page template, and it's not in a row or anything. Height is about 550 pixels. And then I have this parallax setting to three. And all that means is as you kind of scroll through it, you see how the, the image kind of moves. Like here, the, the handlebar and the seat is right at the top. But then when we get down to here, you can see it's well in shot. That's all that does. Moving further down then, let me just close this, keep neat and tidy. Moving further down, we then have the, a section. And inside of that section, we have a row. And inside of that row, again, we have two columns, similar to how this was created up here. I've reversed these two columns, uh, purely because we've got text on the left here, image on the right here. I wanted to flip that around here. Now, all you need to do to do that is just the order of these columns. So the column at the top will be on the left and then the bottom will be on the right. So all you've got to do is just flip these around. And that's simple as that. The only other difference between this section and then this section up here is obviously I've kind of overlaid this banner slightly with this column. So again, all this is come over to this column, hit options, and you can see I've got negative margin here of minus 82 pixels. And all that does is if I scroll that back out again, you can see all it does it's just bring that back up and kind of overlays that. I quite like it, it's kind of a bit different because obviously I could have just done that same thing again where I just have some nice white space down there and, and leave that as is. I wanted to mix things up a bit. So that's why that is like that. Um, again, I haven't set up a scroll to link here, but you now know how to do that. So all you've got to do is if I want specification obviously to come into here, it's I mean, it's a short jump. <laughs> I mean, you don't really need it. Um, but just for argument's sake, scroll to, bullet off, and we're gonna title this as spec. And then we're gonna move that to the top of that text there. In this button, come down to link, hashtag spec, done. There we go, and now that specification button, if I refresh over here, will drop me down into here. Really quite straightforward setup over here too. So I have a row for spec, Two different columns now inside this one i've got obviously that scroll to element i just added some text with again some more some more inline css but it's the same as that stuff up there so i was actually when, when building this i just copied and pasted that that text in there and then and then changed the text as i needed to then we've got uh, an accordion section here now the accordion element i find really really useful because how it works is when you click on these it kind of opens up and you can hide a lot of information on the page to have all of this text kind of displayed on the page outright would be a bit too much. It looks a bit busy, especially for the design that we're kind of going for, which is this really clean, clean look. It wouldn't work. So the accordion I find is great because it hides all this information. Obviously the actual page that I nicked 
all of this kind of stuff from is, is the specialized page over here. Um, where is it here? And you can see just how much stuff is all this text here that I've just hidden away inside of these accordions. Now, obviously I haven't done all of them, um, but I've done a couple so you get the idea. Um, so that's as simple as that. The only difference here again is the use of negative margin just to push this bike off the edge. So you can see if I go on the options, you see I actually have just cropped it um, just so I don't need to use that much negative margin because I think it maxes out. Um, I want to say a hundred. Let's just try it. Uh, 200 so it maxes out at 200 so I decided I, I thought you know what I'll just crop the bike to begin with so I don't need to max it out too much um, and then again yeah it's just this column options and then all I've done is the, the margin right I've put a negative number which is then just push that bike over that way and I have a, a small 25 margin on here as well just to push it a little bit away from the text here on the left hand side um, and that's it as simple as that coming down to the last element here, which is just the geometry section. I've got a row at this, for this top text here, um, and I've just got a column inside that that's only five wide, um, and just to give me this space for the text. And the reason I've separated these two is because I then wanted to add in again, more negative margin, as you can see here, minus 10. Um, and then on this, this next section here, with this picture of the frame, I've then done more negative margin at the top of it. Have I? Where is it? Here we go. I've done more negative margin um, on here to bring that frame up to just cut in on that geometry thing. As you can see here, it just looks a bit more interesting than if that was all the way down there. Um, if I get rid of that, you'll see what I mean. It just looks a bit more interesting having it kind of up there in in in, the, in its face almost. Um, again, if you wanted to, you could go to a similar route as I've done with the home page and actually kind of have this overlapping here. Um, I haven't done that. I think it would be a little bit overkill, but it's definitely an option. It's one now you've learned about how to do this. It's one for the toolkit. In fact, this is actually a great opportunity to show you kind of how this works with the, if you built this kind of thing in the UX builder. So if I come down to, there's the image. If I really ramp that up, you can see actually already I've made it a PNG and it kind of does its thing. Now, if I hit update and save on here, refresh over here, you'll see the issue. You see how it kind of moves. So this screen size here, it covers it, it covers the text geometry too much, I think. Um, and then all the way out, at kind of this screen size, it just doesn't cover it at all. So there's just a bit too much going on there. So again, if you wanted to do this, I think the best way is to, is to actually get this image and get this text and just build it yourself in Photoshop. Um, I think it's a better, a, better, a better way to do that and much cleaner. Lastly, this is just an image for the actual specification section. Obviously, real life, you're probably better to do this as text and put in like an actual table, but simply through sheer time and effort, I thought, you know what, I'll put a picture in there, you get the idea. It's not the most exciting design element, this, this section here. Um, so I'm not gonna, not gonna walk you through how that's done. So there you go, guys. I hope you learned something from that little walkthrough and you can go away and start designing pages like this yourself. There'll be a link in the bio below, as I said, to the Photoshop guide and GIMP guide. I'm also gonna to link to my website with my blog post where you can download this actual UX shortcode. So if you want to go and just nick all of this yourself and put it together, then you absolutely can. When I say UX shortcode, all I mean is if you come on here, you can see all of this stuff here, anything in these, in these square brackets, that's just the shortcode. So if you just take any page, paste this stuff in, you'll get this page, albeit without images. You'll have to plug in your own images, but everything else will work as soon as you've done that. So yeah, there we go. Any questions, please drop a comment below. Thanks guys, catch you in the next one.